I, I think there are people who will go to jail if US law is heeded. I, I really do. I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely shocked by what's been revealed. And frankly, if what's revealed over the next week doesn't force Congress and the mainstream media into an extremely aggressive investigation for the first time of this issue. I'm talking about Church Commission style inquiries. If that doesn't happen, America might as well just declare itself an authoritarian regime and give up pretending to be a democracy. <laughs> strong, uh, strong stuff, Ross. Those are strong words. No, I'm, I'm really confronted about what I'm aware of, Bryce, and there's some stuff that I'm not publishing out of responsibility, you know, national security concerns, and not all of it has come from David Grush. I'm, I'm really quite shocked. Uh, in some cases, I, I'm scared about what I'm aware of. Um, one of the things I really want to emphasize, my friend, and I'm probably jumping the gun on this with you, but you can tell me off later. I, I think that the real story behind the Dave Grush decision to go with the debrief is, and the fact that I'm doing this on News Nation, which is a, a very new network, a very aggressive and exciting new network, but the fact that it's not going in the Washington Post or the New York Times or CBS, ABC, NBC is an indictment of mainstream investigative media. This whole story, the failure of the American media to recognize that all this time this has been a real story. It hasn't been a confabulation. It hasn't been an invention or a wacky tinfoil hat story. It's been reality. To hear Dave Grush say, as he does, that he knows that there's been a deliberate disinformation campaign against the American people to keep this secret from them is, in my book, shocking. And to hear the account that he gives of the crimes that have been committed, serious crimes, very, very serious crimes. And to know that media were approached in the making of this story by Leslie and Ralph to get this published in major newspapers. And you know what? They, they didn't get a spine. They failed. They failed horribly to recognize the significance of this story. And they allowed themselves to be led by their nose by people inside the Pentagon who are still trying to suppress this story. And what I would say is God bless the good people inside the Defense Department and inside the intelligence community who made the decision to back Dave Grush and Leslie and Ralph and provided them with the secondary and tertiary corroboration that they needed. Because there is absolutely no question in this story that it is nailed down tight. I've made stories with the New York Times and the Washington Post. I've written stories that have been vetted by their editors. I know how hard it is to get a story through those newspapers. But by golly, there is absolutely no doubt in my book that Dave Grush's story ought properly to be featured right now on the front page of the New York Times. And I am calling the New York Times and the Washington Post gutless cowards for their failure mm. to follow this story up. This is, I, I cannot believe how badly they have abrogated their responsibility as journalists. What they've done is they've allowed themselves to be fed. They've allowed themselves to be put on the nipple of the intelligence briefers that feed journalists stories. And they've, they've ignored deliberately, they've chosen cravenly to ignore a real story that the American public is demanding to know about, that Congress has mandated by legislation should be known about. And they have contrived in the conspiracy to cover this up. I think the, the editors of the New York Times and the Washington Post, and indeed, Many of the editors of mainstream newspapers around America ought to be taking a long, hard look at themselves after this story because they have failed with a yes. capital F. This is a story of failure. And I, I'm angry. I'm really angry about this because knowing what I know and knowing what you know now, Bryce, what do you think? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry to turn the tables on you, but as I sat there and heard what Dave Grush told us and what has already been revealed in Leslie Kane's debrief article, I got angrier and angrier. It's just appalling that this has been kept secret. And yeah. I, I, I'm not just say, saying this to be nice. I want to pay credit to News Nation and indeed the debrief yes. for having the balls to run this story. They yeah. made a, they've made a courageous decision as fairly small new media companies to take on the national security establishment. And, and that's courageous. I mean, I, it's funny, I, 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 uh, I was thinking Earlier on this week, Bryce, about a guy I really respect and admire, Daniel Ellsberg, the guy who leaked the Pentagon Papers. 
And I was thinking, what would happen if today Daniel Ellsberg walked into the offices of the Washington Post with the Pentagon Papers that, for anybody out there who doesn't know, they, they revealed the failure of US strategic policy in Vietnam, which had been kept suppressed, kept secret from the American public for no good reason. And the Washington Post agonized for weeks about whether to run it. And then they made the courageous decision, despite the fact that they were national security documents, to run them. And you know what? I don't think they would run it today. I really don't. And, and I think that what this story signifies isn't just a tipping point in disclosure. It also signifies a tipping point in the relevance, the growing relevance of podcasts, podcasts like ours, new media, that the Pentagon and the intelligence community cannot suppress. They might try and stomp on them and try and buy them off by offering them stories and giving them access to information that other places don't get. But ultimately, what's really interesting here is the success of new organizations like News Nation and The Debrief, which are breaking stories that, frankly, the mainstream media, the legacy media, have completely abrogated and failed to cover. It possibly could be that this uh, legacy media or the mainstream media, whatever we want to call them, maybe they feel like they have too much to lose and they don't want to be first. Uh, that's why it was surprising in 2017 that the New York Times published the original Kane and Blumenthal and Helen Thomas uh, article. Uh, uh, was it Helen Thomas? Is that do I have that? Uh, right? Helene, Helene Cooper. Cooper, excuse me, Helen Thomas, another reporter out of Washington in years past. Listen, you brought up Daniel Ellsberg. Uh, just today there was an article out in Politico that is titled Daniel Ellsberg is dying and he has some final things to say. Um, Daniel Ellsberg was possibly the most significant whistleblower in, in US history. He's the guy that got the Pentagon Papers uh, published. And uh, this is what he said in that interview. He's talking about the value of whistleblowers. And he said, when everything is at stake, excuse me, when everything is at stake, I'm talking about nuclear war implicitly here, but climate is the same. When we're facing a pretty ultimate catastrophe, when we're on the edge of blowing up the world over Crimea or Taiwan or Bakhmut, from the point of view of a civilization and the survival of eight or nine billion people, when everything is at stake, can it be worth even a small chance of having a small effect by being a whistleblower? And the answer is, of course. Of course it can be worth that. You could even say it's obligatory. So let's just uh, let's tip to Daniel Ellsberg and the great uh, contribution he made. And, and I wish more people will look at that and see how it was done and, and try to bring it to this. I, I do want to uh, get back on track on on our interview, or your interview rather, with um, Dave Brush. When I watched it uh, being recorded and then later as it was cut into various things, I thought, wow, he is definitely saying some outrageous things. And when people hear it, they'll, they'll hear them. Uh, but there were some things uh, that he said off camera as well that were kind of outrageous. Um, but he also said, and you were very diligent in pressing him on certain of these issues, and he said many times that there were places where he literally could not say, but he had delivered all the relevant material to the proper committees, all right? He said that many times, and I think he was talking about the fact that, as I understand it, he has spoken uh, under oath in classified hearings to the Senate Intelligence Committee and I believe even a House committee where he has told not only the story he told you in those six to seven hours, but all of the stuff about locations, people, names of uh, projects, etc., where he has laid those details out and told the Senate and the House, hey folks, if you really want to get kick the rocks over and find out what's underneath, this is where you go. Has Dave Grush uh, offered up a credible roadmap then to the uh, American government for how to get out of this. Yes. Good. Moving on. No, seriously, uh, am I right about that? That he's spoken uh, under oath for over 11 hours to Congress? Correct. I mean, if you think about that, I, 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 with him naming specifics of all the things that he, he was very proper about it's almost like there was a line given him with this Dobson review, and he knew he could go up to there, but he wasn't supposed to go there. That part he knows, he knows much more than he's told us. Absolutely. Sure. So when people watch these interviews as they roll out over the next uh, a few days, and, and frankly, probably over weeks, I want everyone to understand that. He is also stating that he has given the details about where what these reverse engineering programs are, crash retrieval programs are, and he's told names and dates and, and all the stuff that Congress would need if they really wanted to go 
look into this in a serious way. So 